Back and thank you very much for staying with us. Now, if the country were to hold national elections in the next 24 hours, which political party would you vote for? In fact, would you vote at all? Well, according to a recent poll by Ipsos, the ANC would score around 40% support. The market research and consulting form firm warns the signals the crumbling of the governing party's dominance. Political analyst and ANC veteran Omri Mahwale joins us to weigh in on this. Mr. Mahwale, good morning and thank you very much for your time. You you know, this particular one states to us that actually it would probably get 42 percent, this particular poll, that the ANC would get 42 percent. And there's another one that's even worse from the report that places them at around 38 percent. What do you make of that? Yes, uh, the, the signs are there for us to see that the, the ANC is uh, declining. Uh, we think it will most likely be under 50 percent. I don't think it will go up to 38 myself, but uh, it will be under 50 percent unless we change some of the things now between now and 2024 elections. So, uh, you know, the the ball is still in ANC's court. It's still ANC to lose the elections. So what I'm saying is, we are forecasting, we are expecting that will go under 50 percent if we continue in the manner we are continuing now because the ANC is declining continuously at the moment. Mm -hmm. I love your optimism where you say that the ball is still in the ANC's court, that it's their election to lose, because even this particular research has found that even though the ANC could decline, it doesn't seem that it would be to the benefit of other political parties, meaning yet again we could see people just stay home. Yes, that's, that, that's, the, that's, that, that's the main issue. But uh, the main issue, uh, the, also the critical point is that uh, the ANC, even if it loses elections, it will still be the biggest party in the country, in the sense that if it's at, uh, let's say, assuming it's at 45 percent, or it will still be higher than all other parties. So it is still up to the ANC to lose elections. But uh, of course, if we can, uh, as the ANC, address some of the critical problems, the jobs, you know, uh, the infrastructure, uh, corruption, you know, crime rate. If we can address some of those things, uh, problems uh, in a manner in which the society is aware, uh, we might just scrape through the above 50%. But I'm saying that it's for the ANC to lose because it's the ANC basically that's self-killing, I mean, committing suicide with all these things that we are doing. We have been uh, uh, killing the ANC throughout. Basically, the National Executive Committee of the ANC, the Working Committee of the ANC, and uh, the Deployment Committee of ANC is responsible for all this mess we have because they have been responsible for people who destroyed ESCOM, people who destroyed Transnet, people who destroyed Prasa. All these people were appointed by the Tudor House, the NEC in, uh, taking part. Uh, the deployment committee being participated in. So all these people are actually responsible for killing the ANC, you mm -hmm. know, uh, with the deployment committee, uh, you know, playing a major role because the, the various ministers were, up, were appointed by the Tudor House and the deployment committees. And, and as you see, things are destroyed. Mm -hmm. So how does the ANC correct this? Because clearly then the trust is broken with those that were once loyal members of the party or voters of the party. What happens now? How can they correct this? Because the damage has been far reaching. People are living with the damage right now of those very poor decisions in so far as deployment was concerned. Yes, uh, it's true. Uh, what I think will happen is that uh, it will be a temporary situation. The ultimate uh, solution will come when we change the parliamentary electoral laws and allow the South African citizens directly to elect members of parliament, directly to elect the president of South Africa, directly elect the premiers in their provinces, directly elect their mayors in their towns and cities. When we reform these parliamentary laws and allow that, that will be the ultimate solution. But for now, uh, as a temporary measure, uh, what the, the executive can do, of course, uh, President Ramaphosa, he can make sure that he puts, uh, you know, uh, systems in place to fight corruption. Mm -hmm. Corruption must be seen. You must be seen that he is fighting corruption. Society must be convinced. Convinced. Society must be convinced that he is fighting corruption. They must see tangible results. 
Uh, but uh, as we continue like this, no tangible results. So the, the people are not, uh, you know, impressed. And of course, uh, the crime rate, the, the zamazamas in the mines and so on, uh, raping our, our women. So uh, everything just goes worse. And, but the executive has got the responsibility to show to the community, to the society, the South African population, that they are addressing these problems. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, they are not convincing. They are not convincing, I must say. Mm -hmm. You say perhaps the tide will turn when uh, citizens are permitted to choose their own members directly to go to parliament and even able to choose their own president. But then there's this other argument where they're saying there's generally a leadership deficit in the country. Which person then could emerge as a president if we were given the opportunity to elect that president? Who do you see right now? Because there are many individuals, but it seems South Africans are saying they actually don't know who should lead them at this point, to the point where some are even talking of a former chief justice perhaps uh, being the one who leads the country. Yes, I think, I think in terms of leadership, South Africa is not short of leadership. But the leadership that we are having in parliament is the one that is responsible for this. But there are many South Africans across the length and breadth of the country from the Cape Akalas to Messina Bedbury, from Devon this side in the east to Port Nolot in the west, there are many South Africans who are capable of actually running this country, cleaning this country. It's just that they are not there in the offices because they, they don't know how to rig elections. You know, you remember in the AC <laughs> and in the country at the moment, it's about rigging elections. If you don't have the skill to rig elections, you are out. So basically, it's not that the leadership is not there. The country has got enough resources that the country has got enough citizens who can run the country in a much more competent way. It's just that they are not in political powers uh, and they, they, are, they are not uh, skillful in rigging elections. So that's mm. what I would say. But uh, South Africa has got enough pe people to, to run the country. Mm. Oh, Mr. Mohale, some politicians would take, would take exception to that term that possibly they're in power because they rigged elections and even the IEC themselves might really, really want to respond to that. But thank you nevertheless for your analysis. So that's political analyst Omri Mahwale.